Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So hopefully you had a chance to see Dancing with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. from last night. The episode paid a lot of fan service to May Coulson shippers and did a really good job of making fun of classic spy movies. It was like a nice Whedonverse cheese spread. Lots of stuff to get through, so let's start with top five moments, then I'll do my review. And also, really big heads up, there was a major DC bombshell that just dropped. They announced a whole bunch of movies that are going to happen after Justice League, so I'll talk about that in a separate video, or maybe my Arrow video tonight. Careful for S.H.I.E.L.D. spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet. I'll wait just a sec. Okay, here we go. Top 5 moments. Number 5. Someone else is writing cosmic code all over the place. I think it's Sky's father. As far as we know, he's one of the few other crazy looking people who has knowledge of the obelisk in that universal code. As for why he's writing it on the back of 500 year old paintings of the Christ child, we don't know. It could be that he just had a breakout and happened to be in that area at the time. It seems like at a certain point they just lose control over their ability to not carve stuff. That's what Coulson's contingency plan was all about, in case he just starts spouting gibberish about life, the universe, and the meaning of everything, just like Garrett last season. The painting itself was a total red herring. Now that Coulson has it, I suspect it'll just get lumped in with Sky's mission to decode the symbols. As far as we know, every time Coulson, for instance, carves new symbols, they're the same symbols. We don't know if he's writing pages of code or if he's writing the same code over and over. Eventually what's going to happen is, is we'll just get an episode dedicated to all code stuff and then they'll probably explain what's going on. Number four, Dancing with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So unless Dancing with the Stars does a cosplay edition, I am never going to watch that show. It's just not my thing. But S.H.I.E.L.D. did a cross promo last night where Clark Gregg and the other actors actually guest starred on Dancing. Both shows air on ABC, so they're just promoting each other. It's a business thing. TV networks do it all the time. I feel like if ABC really wanted to promote Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they would just have Ming-Na fight someone to the death on live TV. Inside this episode, all that dancing stuff was just them making fun of classic spy movies. This is the Whedon vs. Cheese that I was talking about. I don't really enjoy watching classic spy movies anymore, so I felt like I was viewing all this stuff from Sky's perspective. Sky's like a good avatar for your average younger viewer who just looks at all this ballroom classic spy stuff and just goes WTF. As a point of interest though, I love the fact that they just put the laser focus on Coulson and May. They're two of the most interesting characters, but we don't always get to spend a lot of time with them. I was really happy they worked all this into like the really cheesy spy stuff. Like if they hadn't have worked in all this character stuff, it wouldn't have been a very fun episode for me. I do kind of suspect though that behind the scenes, Clark Gregg and Ming-Na like as actors had a lot of fun doing all this dancing stuff. There actually is a lot of choreography that goes into it. It's just like choreographing a fight scene, like all of May's fight scenes, which were obviously crazy awesome. Number three, Clark Gregg 007. They make the move to get the painting and continue the theme of, you know, making fun of these old spy movies with all the gadgets. I feel like gadgets work really well inside the S.H.I.E.L.D. universe. I mean, this is a world that has been laden with Stark tech, so of course there's going to be gadgets everywhere. But the funny part is, is when May just walks across the laser floor and just says, they already know we're here. They could have just smashed their way down there and they would have done just as well. Again, most of the things in this episode were used for comedy, like the laser floor. It's a very classic spy movie thing. Very silly now in retrospect when you look at movies like The Bourne Franchise and other modern spy stuff. If any of you want a good laugh after watching this episode, actually go back and watch some of the classic Bond films. They're a lot of fun, but they do seem really silly. Number two, Dr. Whitehall does his own dirty work. As far as TV villains go right now, I feel like he is one of the best. Like he is setting the benchmark. Ra's al Ghul is coming on Arrow, so he is going to have a lot to live up to if he's going to match this crazy Nazi Hydra level villain. I do feel like S.H.I.E.L.D. is leading the curve, but it'll be interesting to see at the end of everyone's season who the best TV villain is. I might just be having more fun with the Whitehall character just because I'm more familiar with the actor inside the Whedonverse. Like he was on Dollhouse and Much Ado About Nothing, so I might be a little biased because of that. But he does feel like he's tailor-made for this very calm, collected, evil Nazi character. That speech that he gave Reyna was amazing. Think about how much unnecessary surgery that is. It's like a Saw movie. It's like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. doing a Saw movie. Very terrifying, very good performance. And number one, Face Off May. I love the way they humanized everything just by giving little character bits about her, like May hates coffee or letting Clark Gregg punch Ming-Na in the face. Can we get more of that? More of that, please. This is why S.H.I.E.L.D. is so much fun, because it lets Clark Gregg punch Ming-Na in the face, makes coffee jokes, 
and still makes you scared at the end of the day. The special effects work was amazing, you know, just doing two versions of May. But because the show has access to the same technology that the movies use to do special effects, it's a little bit easier for them to do like the crazy gadgets and the big CG scenes. I mean, yes, all the gadgets are ridiculous, but in the context of this episode, they totally work for me. The face-off stuff was a little bit silly. If you've ever seen that movie, you should totally watch it. Nicolas Cage plays a crazier version of Nicolas Cage. I will say though, the May fight scene, probably my favorite fight scene on television this year so far, next to maybe the Red Viper versus the Mountain. Very planned out, very elegant, very mind-blowing. In fact, if it were legal to just post straight up clips of TV shows on YouTube, I would just make montages of her fight scenes. I could make like an entire YouTube channel that's just AMV fight scenes. Let me know though, what was your favorite moment from the episode and do you think that Reyna is going to give Dr. Whitehall the obelisk? I had actually kind of hoped that she would manifest some sort of crazy inhuman power and just blow the car up, but it's not to be I suppose. Overall I gave the episode a B plus just for doing such great character work with May and Coulson while at the same time, you know, making fun of all the cheesy spy movies. I hope you brought crackers for this nice Whedonverse cheese spread. I could have done without the dancing, but it didn't take me out of the episode too much. It felt a little like an episode that I would show to my parents if I wanted to get them to watch S.H.I.E.L.D. Like they grew up with all these cheesy spy movies and Dancing with the Stars has a much older demo that they fall into. So you can see how Dancing with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a bit of a pitch to the older viewers. I do totally love cheesy things in my TV shows. Gotham's a perfect example of a cheesy comic book show that I totally love. So Whedon vs. Cheese, always appreciated. I also feel like Ming Na just continues to prove that she is the biggest badass female character on television. Let me know though, who is your favorite badass female from any TV show? We'll make them fight Ming Na to the death during Sweeps Week. So next week the big news is Adrian Palicki is going to debut as Mockingbird from the comics. The title of that episode is A Hen in the Wolf House. If you saw the promo, it's just her inside a Hydra base. The title's a play on the saying, a wolf in the hen house. It just means that she's going to be a shield double agent just like Simmons, so she's going to be beating the crap out of a lot of Hydra people. It'll be crazy. Just like I'm doing with this video, I'll probably post that next episode on Wednesday morning, so be sure to subscribe to get that. If any of you have questions about the schedule, I know I'm kind of shuffling videos around a little bit, just let me know in the comments. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, really important DC Comics stuff happening right now. Jason Momoa Aquaman movie just announced, new Green Lantern movie, new Flash movie, it's crazy. So I'll talk about that in my Arrow video tonight. Just to follow up on the Robert Downey Jr. Captain America stuff too, for those wondering, Marvel typically does not comment when big stories like this leak out, but the original story and the $40 million payday thing were reported by Variety and they're basically one of the most trusted news sources in Hollywood. So I would believe that at this moment, that's what's happening. The movie isn't going to get made for a while, so obviously small details could always change, but for the time being, you know, Robert Downey Jr. in the movie getting paid about $40 million. It's still going to be crazy, but click here to learn more about what's going on with that. It's actually pretty interesting. And click here for last week's S.H.I.E.L.D. video. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all high five, and I'll see you guys tonight for Arrow.